this boy has already had his first meal, and this clutch of lightning pies is very feisty. And I'm hoping that he proves out to be Heck Clown, because he's going to be uh, probably one of my most important holdbacks from the uh, this season so far. And um, I had an awesome question on Friday from, I think it was the... I don't know if I'm even pronouncing this right. It's like djinj671 on the YouTube video from Friday. And they asked, how do you plan your holdbacks? What what makes you decide which snakes out of each clutch are a holdback? And honestly, that's probably one of the best questions that I've had ever. Because people don't really talk about that. Um, I mean, it's very simple to me. And it, it, I guess it has been since I first started breeding and, and producing animals um but you know it's like where a lot of kind of things you need to factor into what a holdback is going to be um so fantastic question and i'll go into it a little more and show some of the animals that i've picked out you know previously from the last couple of years um uh, but basically for me um Let's just say lightning pie, since that's what I've been talking about the most this month, and that's all we're going to be talking about, and it, it's very important. So I'm producing lightning pies, and once I uh, got the mail last year that uh, you know OD Blade Pie Doublehead Light uh, MJ Clown. Once I proved out that he was MJ Exanthic, um, that made me dive into the Lightning Clown Pied project a little deeper, Pr proving out that he was uh, a triple recessive snake and then having known that I produced a bunch last year and that I, my whole plan this year now is to produce a lot more of them. So let's take that project, for example. And uh, you know, this most recent clutch is probably, well, I guess these last two clutches, because my last clutch, he was bred to a clown female. So now the issue with that is I can't test for MJ yet. So what do I decide from this clutch? Uh, what I'm keeping. So let's take all these snakes out here. And so I can show them all to you. Okay. So keep in mind that I've been working this project for a while. So, you know, I have a few snakes already. Um, so the most important thing for me typically is I look at females first. And that's usually how I actually number my snakes. So... If this is clutch six, this is snake six one, six two, six three, so we'll go all the way down to seven. I take the animals that have the most genes in them for the clutch, and I start with the females, and I think, okay, this is the best looking female. Uh, she has the most genetics in her. She's clown head pied, pos head MJ. And this one specifically, because I, I believe she's, uh, I believe it was Leopard Blade, possible OD in there. I'm keeping her no matter what, because she has two, possibly three genes in her. She's a visual clown. She's also het pied, because the dad was a visual pied, so she carries that gene. And she's pos head MJ. So even if she's not MJ, she's an upgrade for me in the clown pied project. And she's fantastic looking. So, uh, easy hold back number one. Here's number two. Now, this female is a pastel leopard clown head pied, pos head MJ. Um, if she doesn't, I'm going to keep her basically until I can test her for MJ. Once I'm able to test her for MJ, uh, you know, if she is MJ, I'm keeping her no matter what. If she isn't, it's going to be on the fence about whether or not I keep her. She doesn't have a whole lot going on. Uh, pastel, you know, I, take it or leave it in clown or clown pied. I don't care about it. Leopard's important in clown pied um, to me, but I have it in a lot of snakes already. And this female here has it, and I'm keeping her no matter what. So, you know, if she's not MJ, uh, I probably wouldn't keep her. And so she, I'm on the fence with her. I'm waiting for testing. This boy, I believe he's a leopard OD. Or do I have these backward? I don't, I don't, now I'm kind of confusing myself which ones were Leopard OD and which ones are Blade OD or what they were. But he's a unique male. Um, again, Clown Head Pied, Pos Head MJ. He, I'm on the fence about whether or not he's going to stay here. Again, it needs to be uh, tested for MJ. And on top of that, it's also going to depend on what my newest clutch, 
uh, proves out to be. Now that I can test those snakes already for a Het Clown, and I know they're all MJ, like the Lightning Pied Clutch, this male might just get released right away anyways um, if one of those males from the new clutch has enough genes in him. Um, because hitting the double recessive, um, the triple recessive is going to be harder than worrying about whether or not I have an extra codom. Even if this guy has a different codom than one of the lightning pies I I'd choose to keep, um, because he's only a single visual recessive, it makes, uh, you know, producing triple recessives even harder. So probably wouldn't keep him, but I am going to keep him until I test him because the value of the snake is going to be a lot higher if he's MJ Xanthic. Uh, now this male, I decided to let go because he's only Orange Dream. Um, there's not enough going on there. I mean, his OD clown pied at the worst. He's Poss had MJ. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't have enough genes in him. This one might, this one has one or two extra genes. So it's worth me holding back to look at. But with only one gene in him, I'm going to have a better male from this new clutch. Um, and I, there's no point in me keeping multiples because the dad is already an OD blade pied double head MJ clown. So why would I keep an OD clown head pied pos head MJ? Doesn't make any sense. This female, um, I think she she was a pastel OD uh, clown head pied pos head MJ. I actually just decided to release her. Um, to me, or this is a male, sorry. Um, this is kind of in the same category as this one. It doesn't add anything to the project. Um, she's actually going to be, he's going to be shipping, I keep saying she, he's going to be shipping out next week um, because he hasn't had any, add anything to the project over what I am already, uh, what I already have here. Pastel to me isn't worth keeping it. This male, again, at the best, he's a triple het um, with one or two codoms in him. Doesn't add anything to my project, so he's out the door. This is the last female in the clutch. And man, watch this. She is the most angry snake that I've produced in a long time. Are you not going to bite now? She's usually always bitey, bitey McBitey. And she bites so hard that she actually moves herself forward in the tub. Um, but again, she's triple het. Uh, it's, it makes the odds way too hard for me to hit a visual anything, um, a triple visual. So she's not staying there. She's gone. She's out the door. So that's how I, you know, figured through this clutch. Now let's look at the lightning pies. Have about four of them, five of them haven't shed out yet. So some of them are going to not be very pretty. And no, this one's not in a separate tub yet, but, uh, two lightning pies have shed and, um, we have a couple, all of the het MJs have shed. All right, so now this clutch is a little harder to figure out because um, I basically need to test all of them. Now, luckily I hit six females here, as you can see. Again, I started off with the, the three uh, lightning pied females, the visual lightning pieds, and then I have the three lightning pied males because those are the most important snakes in the clutch. And then I have the boop, 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 the four pied head MJs. Now they're all getting tested for clown. So that's very important um, as to which ones I'm gonna keep because I don't need to keep any lightning pieds if they're not uh, males, let's say. Let's start with males, uh, that'll make it easier. So the males, I don't really need to keep a male um, if it's not head clown. Um, because the dad, again, has both genes, both codoms, OD and Blade, uh, from this clutch. Uh, and he's visual pied. So, you know, having an OD Blade lightning pied male, um, you know, is technically good maybe to add in other projects. But without it being Het Clown, it's not necessarily an upgrade over the dad. It might even be a downgrade. Um, so as far as these males go, what I'll probably end up keeping is whichever one is lightning pied at clown. Now, uh, the best of both worlds is this guy right here. If this guy is, I believe he's a lightning pied OD blade, 
If he proves out to be Heck Clown, then I hit the best of both worlds. I get the codoms, plus I get all the recessives, and he's a giant upgrade over the dad if he's a double visual rather than a visual double head. So he's staying here no matter what. And then what would happen is I would, you know, keep the dad, continue to breed the dad until this guy is, you know, breeding on a regular basis. And then I'd probably let go of the dad too, because by that point, I'm probably gonna have triple visuals, I would hope. So then that allows me to release, let's just say two other males. I don't need three of this or two of the same thing, three of the same thing. Um, and then so those males would kind of go out the door, which brings me back to this male right here. Now he's a Pied Hedem J. Xanthic, Posset Clown, which we'll prove out, but he is, he'd be a lateral move to the dad. Whatever, this male could not possibly be, be a better combinations of, what's he doing there? He can't be a better combination of genes than what the dad already is. There's no reason for me to keep him. So he gets released. How cute is that? He's a little, little burrowing boy right there. So then we are, maybe this was the one that was super feisty. Maybe I got them mixed up. Maybe she, she's looking like she wants to take a bite out of me here. Just not when I take them out. Not when I open them up. Not when I have them on camera. Now I have these three females. The three non-visual MJs. They're all head MJs, but they're non-visual. Again, this goes back to clown testing. As far as I can confirm right now, I only have one female that's pied double head MJ clown. She's an adult. She's the one who produced the lightning pie last year that helped me uh, confirm that the mom and the dad were both MJ Xanthic. Um, so I can't confirm any other snakes I have are head MJ. I kept back four females from last year that were clown head pied pos head MJ, but I still can't even prove out that they're head MJ because there's no test for it. So these three females are probably going to be the same thing. If any of them test positive for head clown, that means that they'd be pied, double hat, MJ clown. And I will probably keep them until I can prove out some of the females from last year, or I just might keep them anyways. Unless my luck on these lightning pods is fantastic, and a bunch of them prove out to be het clown. Um, by the way, this girl right here is just stunning. So I think, I mean, these two right here are probably the same thing. It's just one's exanthic. And one's not. How pretty is that snake? They're, I mean, they're both awesome, but the orange and that and the black is so cool. And she kind of looks like she has like a jack o' lantern design right there on her back. I think they all kind of did, but I think one of them had it more than the other ones. Um, so these three females are going to be highly dependent on whether or not clown is in the mix, because that's that's the most important thing here. I can already make lightning pies. I have three visual lightning pied adults. I have two more adults that are uh, pied head MJ head clown. I'm trying to produce more lightning clown pies. That's the next step in this project is to make lightning clown pies. So how do I get to making more lightning clown pies? Well, I need to have more triple triple recessive snakes. That they don't need to be double recessive. Uh, hats. Some of them can be um, single recessive double hats, but obviously the more double he double visual hats that you have, the easier it is to push that project along. So I think what you're kind of looking at doing is what's going to make this project go down the road a little bit further. How do I progress it? And not only do you have to do that um, with, you know, single genes or smaller projects, but you need to kind of project that out, not just one year, two years, but five years, right? If my goal is to make lightning clown pies, um, I could potentially hit one this year. You know, I could breed the same two snakes last year that I bred that produced a lightning pied for me that uh, have all three, G three recessives in them, but it's a super long shot. Because, you know, a, a visual, they're two visual pieds and they're both double head uh, exanthic clown. The odds of me hitting 
a uh, triple recessive and that are tiny. Now, people have done it, but I'm not planning on it. And I also have the four females I produced last year, but I don't know if any of them are head MJ yet. But they're still only single visual double head. So, my next step, especially with these lightning pied clutches this, this, this month, is to create and hold back as many double visual single heads that I can. Because there's a giant difference between you making a triple recessive when you're breeding only single visual double heads to double visual single heads. There's a giant difference. Um, so that's what your next step is in trying to get to that triple recessive snake. So you want to hold back everything that helps you get further in that project. And I would say that that's probably like the blackhead leopard Mojave hypopied male that's exanthic for me. That's probably as big of a project for me right now as my lightning clown pipe project. I would say those are my two projects that I'm working on that I consider to be higher end that isn't oversaturated, right? And that I know is going to, they're going to produce beautiful animals and they're going to produce beautiful animals that people want um, that I would assume are going to be easy to sell because lightning pies are easy to sell. I don't think they, nobody's ever sold a lightning clown pie. I think Garrick DeMeyer was the first one to create a GCR clown pied, and we know GCR is compatible with MJ. We still do not know if they're the same gene or not. Uh, that I don't know what's happening with that test. I haven't heard about it in months um, since I gave them my shed tests. So I don't know where they're at with what MJ and GCR are in, in, in comparison to each other. But, you know, you can be in a project producing things that everybody else is producing. Everybody's making DG pies at this point. Everybody's making clown pies at this point. Everybody's starting to make DG clowns at this point. But, you know, being able to produce a lot of a triple recessive is a hard thing to do. So the more double visual single hats that I have, the easier it is going to be for me to create that. Because if I'm breeding... Uh, a lightning pied head clown to a lightning pied head clown, I still only have a 25% chance of hitting a triple visual. And that's not even like bringing in any uh, extra codons at that point. So that's why it's also important for me to have, if, if that male ends up being OD blade, uh, double visual single head, he's even more valuable to me. So that's how I pick my holdbacks. You have to be very selective. If something happens later in the year where you have another clutch that's working into that project and you get something better out of it, then you can release one of those holdbacks from an earlier clutch. And that's what I'm going to do with these three girls. You know, they're, I'd rather be safe than sorry. And I have no idea what's in the rest of my rack, um, you know, from last year or even what's going to come out the rest of this year. But, you know, if, all three of these girls end up being het clown and I let them all go. You know, those are three females that in two years I could be breeding that give me better chances of hitting lightning clown pies. And, you know, if I'm lucky and produce a triple visual male in the next 12 months, 18 months, I could be breeding him to these three females. And, you know, I have pretty good odds, a lot better odds of hitting a triple visual. Uh, more triple visuals. And then at that point, you know, I'd have so many that, you know, I can start maybe releasing some at some point, actually cashing in on this project. Um, but that's how you pick your holdbacks. You basically want to keep the best animals out of the clutch um, that help progress your projects. I mean, it's, it is, it's pretty simple. I mean, it, it, that that's it. It, it. If it's a clown clutch, and, you know, it's just, you know, like a two gene clown to a three gene clown. I want to keep a snake out of there that has three, four, five genes, something a little different than what I have, or maybe opposite gender of what I have. You know, if I'm breeding a, uh, a confusion orange dream clown to a chocolate, um, uh, chocolate red stripe clown, if I get a confusion 
chocolate red stripe clown out of that, regardless of which gender it is, I'm probably keeping it because it's an upgrade over either parent. Um, and if it's a female, I'm definitely keeping it because then I have two females that have chocolate and red stripe, and now it also has confusion. The second one also has confusion. And people don't have a bunch of snakes like that in their collection at any one given time. Now, um, the male, because it has one, if I kept that and it was a male, the chocolate red stripe confusion clown, if it's a, a extra gene over top of what the dad already had, I would raise that snake up. I would, once I confirm that it's starting to breed and locking and maybe producing clutches, then you can sell the dad, make some money off the dad, and then you have an upgrade with the son. So that's how you go through. You really just want to keep the best snakes out of the uh, clutch. You want to make sure that you're always upgrading things. Um, you don't want to be keeping a ton of the same unless it helps your odds at making, hitting that triple recessive. Um, but it doesn't do me any good here to just keep a bunch of pied head MJs that aren't head clown because I can make money off of those right now and I can make, oh my God, excuse me. Um, I'd rather just keep lightning pies. Like I have lightning pies. I can make lightning pies easy. If I wanted to make just lightning pies, I have an adult male and two females, and I can just make two clutches of lightning pies if I wanted to. I don't want to do that. I want to make lightning clown pies. So keeping pied head MJs that don't have clown on them at this point doesn't get me anywhere. Um, I need to upgrade. So, you know, if all three of those lightning pied females are head clown, they're sure as hell staying here. Nobody's even sniffing those snakes because I've worked too long to get to this point where I have those snakes. So they're staying here. And they are going to think about this in, a, in, in two years if they're ready to breed or if they have clutches for me in two years. If I'm breeding a lightning pied head clown to three lightning pied head clowns and I get, um, let's just say, 20 eggs out of it, 25% of those babies should be triple visuals. That's five snakes. Can you imagine hitting five lightning clown pieds in two years? Have the odds, good enough odds to hit five? Now, I've been screwed with odds before. I had a 25% chance of hitting clown pines last year with like 20 eggs, and I only hit two, and one of them didn't survive. So I had one. I, well, I technically, I guess hit two. I had a 10%. I had a 10% success rate at hitting clown pines last year when I was supposed to have a 25% success rate. Now, in this clutch, I had a 50% chance of hitting lightning pines, but I actually had better, I hit 60%. So sometimes your percentages are up or down, but whatever. But to make a double recessive, most of you are probably going to be aiming at double recessives. I have a couple different projects now where I'm hitting triple recessives or trying to. So I want to reduce my failure rate. I want to make my odds better at hitting triple recessives, and I need to hold back every snake I can that gives me the odds to do that. So that's how I figure out my holdbacks. Um, you know, like these two girls from last year, this is the clutch that helped me prove out that, um, you know, the male and the female were both MJ Xanthic. So I made this girl. She's a lightning pied. I'm actually going to test her for clown with this other clutch to figure out if she's clown or not. I will probably end up selling her if she's not clown. Now, this one is 66% double head clown on MJ. If she's not clown, um, I'm probably going to sell her too because she'll just be 66% head MJ and she doesn't do anything for my projects. They're a nice size, but I'm not going to waste the time raising her up, especially if she's not head MJ. If she's not head MJ, then I just have a... She's probably an OD blade. Um, I have an OD blade pied, which, I mean, is would probably be the worst snake uh, that I have for the pie project. So she doesn't make any sense to me. Now, if she's head clown, I'll probably keep her. Um, you know, I'll try to prove out if she's MJ, if there's no test out anytime soon. Um, but, you know, at least I can breed her into the clown pie project and, and make some neat snakes out of it. So um, this is probably my longest video in a long time. And you guys are probably tired of listening to me talk. Hopefully you enjoyed the sweet animals that I have in here. Um, and hopefully this answered your question. 
Um, be very selective. Don't have any regret. You can always choose to sell your hold backs later down the line if you realize they're not going to work or maybe weren't um, necessary to keep or that you produce something better down the line. But if you sell it right now and you're on the fence about it, you're going to regret it later. And, and like this, in you know, one last kind of like anecdotal thing here. So these Ultramels um, that I produced a few months back, you know, this is a, a female, male, male. I decided, you know, I don't need two males out of this, right? I'm definitely keeping the female because even if she's not had pied, I don't even know what she is and she's really pretty. Now, this male here, again, same thing. I've never seen a snake like it, can't ID it. And um, I decided to keep it. This male, I was on the fence about whether or not I wanted to release. And at the end of the day, I did decide, you know what, I can release him. Um, I I don't think he has the same genetics as the other male. Well, he definitely doesn't. I think the other male might be a little more diverse or something different than what I currently have. So I'm going to let this male go. Um, unfortunately, he, he tested negative for pied, so he's just an ultra male, but he's still an ultra male that nobody's seen before and is going to be a nice payday for me. So, you know, him not being het pied helps me a little bit because the other male had a more prom they, they It's funny, they all have ringers. Um, the other two snakes had more prominent ringers, but that male did too. And he still, it was the first time I'd ever seen a snake with a prominent ringer test negative for pied. So that was kind of crazy. But, so that's, you know, I'm not going to regret that at this point because he's a very pretty ultra male, but I have pretty ultra males. I need pretty ultra males that are going to progress my ultra pied project. All right, that's it for today. It's a long Monday video, but hopefully you guys were able to tune in for the whole thing, and we'll see you tomorrow.